Hello. Throughout this exercise, we are discussing the business of how we estimate the parameters of a distribution by sampling a random variable, as we would do if we were doing an experiment. In the previous video, I introduced the concept of an estimator. I explained that estimators are random variables and they will not necessarily be exactly equal to the true value of the parameter. Furthermore, I introduced the notions of precision and accuracy to differentiate between the two different types of bad estimators of parameters that are shown here. I then demonstrated that the sample mean is an accurate estimator for the expectation for the distribution and asked you to investigate in the exercises whether a mean calculated from n identical random variables is a more precise estimator of the expectation than a mean that is calculated from k random variables where n is greater than k. This graph illustrates what you should have found out by completing these exercises. The precision of the estimate of the expectation increases as we calculate it from more random variables. To construct this graph, I have calculated 100 sample means by taking a sum of two continuous random variables. These are the blue dots. I have calculated 100 sample means by taking a sum of four continuous random variables. These are the red dots. I have calculated 100 sample means by taking a sum of six continuous random variables. These are the green dots. 100 sample means by taking a sum of eight continuous random variables. These are the purple dots. And 100 sample means by taking a sum of 10 continuous random variables. These are the black dots. All of the random variables I have generated are between 0 and 1. So the two true expectation of that the distribution was sampled is 0.5. As you can see, all five sets of data points, for all five sets of data points, the number of points above and below the, the red dashed line, which indicates the true value of the expectation, is roughly the same. All five of these estimators are thus accurate estimators for the mean, as we would expect based on the formulas that we derived in the previous video. When the sample mean is calculated from more random variables, however, all the means lie closer to the line at 0, y equals 0.5. The mean, when the mean is calculated from more random variables, it is thus a more precise estimator for the expectation of the distribution. The fact that the sample mean is an estimator for the expectation explains why this quantity is important and thus draws together the two ideas that we have been studying in the various exercises this week. In this video, we are thus going to refocus on the expectation once more, and we are going to learn how expressions for this quantity can be derived for some of the distributions that we have learned about in previous weeks. There are a var variety of different ways of doing the derivations that I will present in these videos. I have chosen to employ the particular methods that I've used in this course because I think they are the most straightforward. Calculating the moment generating function for the geometric random variable, for instance, is quite involved, and I thus pr prefer to use the straightforward method based on the conditional expectation theorem that I will show you in a subsequent video. Ultimately, however, I don't particularly care about the way that you prove these results yourself. I will most likely not ask you to reproduce the, pr these proofs in the exam as they are trivial, what is more important are the final results. I am presenting these derivations of these results for completeness only. Without further ado then, let's remind ourselves of what we've learned about expectation from the video you watched at the start of that week. In that video, you learned that the expectation of the function g of the random variable capital X is given by the expression shown here. In that video, I also briefly alluded to the star of this particular video, namely the moment generating function, which is the expectation 
of e to the tx, where x is the random variable. Now, notice that the moment generating function, mx of t, is a function and not a scalar like many of the other expectations we have calculated. The moment generating function thus has an argument, t, that appears on both sides of this equation. We can evaluate a single scalar value for the moment generating function at any particular t value. The moment generating function itself, however, is a function. Let's now evaluate uh, the moment generating function for a Bernoulli random variable. If you recall, the Bernoulli random variable has the probability mass function shown here. Our expression for the moment generating function of a discrete random variable is shown here. Notice that we do a sum over all the possible values that the random variable can take here, and that within the sum, the capital X that appears inside the brackets after the expectation symbol is replaced with the index that we are summing over. We can now insert the probability mass function for the Bernoulli random variable into this expression. There are only two values of n for which the p of x equals n is non-zero, namely 0 and 1, so our sum over all n can be replaced with the following sum of two terms. We now, we now recall that e to the 0 is 1 and arrive at the, expectation, at the expression for the moment generating function that is shown here. Notice that, as promised, this final result is not a single number, but is instead a function of t. It is not a function of p, as p is a parameter that is fixed. That is all well and good, I hear you cry. But you said that the aim was to calculate the expectation as the sample mean is an estimator of this quantity. The expectation is a single scalar, and here you are telling me about this function. What are you playing at, Trebello? We are getting there, I promise, but before we do, we need to do another thing that will at first seem at odds with this aim. We are going to differentiate the moment generating function with respect to t. This differentiation problem is not particularly difficult. We first need to recall that the differentiation operator has the distributive property over addition. We can thus bring the differential operator d by dt inside the sum as shown here. We can then differentiate e to the tn as p to the we don't need to differentiate p of x equals n as this does not depend on t. If we differentiate e to the tn with respect to t, we get n e to the tn. If we evaluate this derivative at t equals 0, look at what happens. At t equals 0, e to the tn is e to the 0, which is 1, and the expression thus produces to the following. We can recognise that the right-hand side of this expression is just the expectation of the random variable, however. What we have thus found is that if we evaluate the first derivative of the moment generating function, we get a function. If, however, we then evaluate the value of this function at t equals 0, we arrive at the expectation. We can thus arrive at the result we require, the expectation of the random variable, by this rather circuitous route. We are not yet done with the moment generating function's tricks, however. If instead of calculating the first derivative of the moment generating function, we take the kth derivative, we can do a similar derivation to the one we have just completed, as shown here. We thus find that the value of the kth derivative of the moment generating function at t equals 0 is equal to the expectation of our random variable raised to the power k. This quantity, the expectation of x to the k, 
is known as the kth moment of the distribution, hence the name moment generating function. The moment generating function is just the function we use to generate all the moments of the distribution. The kth moment is the value of the kth derivative of the moment generating function at t equals zero. Let's now apply what we have just learned to calculate the expectation of the Bernoulli random variable. We established on a previous slide that the moment generating function for this type of random variable is 1 minus p plus p e to the t, as shown here. If we take the first derivative of this expression with respect to t, we get p e to the t. Consequently, when t equals 0, the first derivative is equal to p as e to the 0 is 1. The expectation for a Bernoulli random variable is thus p. While we're at it, let's calculate the second moment of this distribution. As shown here, the second moment is also equal to p. In fact, it's easy to demonstrate that all the moments of the Bernoulli random variable are equal to p. The second moment is important, however, as the expectation of x squared appears in our expression for the variance. When we substitute this value and our value for e of x into this expression, we thus find that the variance for a Bernoulli random variable is p minus p squared or p times 1 minus p. I have perhaps not convinced you that this method of calculating expectations using the moment generating function is particularly useful by demonstrating how you would use it to calculate the expectation and variance of a Bernoulli random variable, which is frankly quite an easy problem. Where it comes into its own is when it comes to calculating the expectation and variance of the binomial random variable, which we will do now. Recall that the probability mass function for a binomial random variable is given by the expression shown here, and that our expression for the moment generating function of a discrete random variable is as follows. Notice also that I've used k for the index of the summation here, as opposed to the n I used in previous der derivations, as n already appears as a parameter in the expression for the probability mass function. The capital X in the e to the tx is thus replaced by a k when this term appears in the sum. When we substitute the probability mass function for a binomial random variable into this expression, we get the following. Notice that these two terms are both raised to the power k. We can thus use the law of exponents to rewrite this expression as follows. This is useful as the summation here appears in the binomial theorem that is shown at the top right corner of the slide. The binomial theorem, by the way, is an important result and one that you should store in your bag of mathematical tricks. When we apply the binomial theorem here, a is thus p e to the t and b is 1 minus p. The final result for the moment generating function of a binomial random variable is thus as shown here. Now that we have calculated the moment generating function for the binomial random variable, we can calculate the expectation and variance for this type of random variable by taking suitable derivatives. The first derivative of this function with respect to t is shown here. When this is evaluated at t equals 0, we thus find that the expectation of a binomial random variable is n multiplied by p. The second derivative of the moment generating function with respect to t, meanwhile, is as shown here. At t equals 0, this simplifies down to the following expression for the second moment. We can then substitute these expressions for the expectation in second moment into the expression for the variance. When we do so and expand out the brackets in the expression for the second moment, we obtain the following. The factors of n squared p squared here cancel, and the expression thus reduces down to n multiplied by p multiplied by 1 minus p. To summarise then, 
We have in this video introduced the moment generating function and we've shown how this function be can be calculated for discrete random variables by using the expression shown here. We have seen that the moment generating function takes its name because we can calculate the kth moment of the distribution by evaluating the kth derivative of the moment generating function at t equals zero as is explained on this slide. There is one final thing to note about these moments before we finish, however. Notice the following about the expectation of a mean by take, calculated by taking the kth power of a series of identically distributed random variables xi. Just as we did when we investigated the expectation of a sample mean, we can use the linearity of the expectation operator to bring the expectation inside the sum here. Furthermore, all the xi are ident identically distributed and are thus all the xi to the k, which are also random variables, are identically distributed. We are thus adding the same number together n times and dividing by n. We thus find that, much like the mean, the expectation, uh, the kth moment even, can be accurately estimated by computing a mean using the expectation by using the expression shown here. We will use this idea when it comes, comes to determining the parameters of the distributions by sampling. We will come to that in the next live video, however. In the meantime, thanks for your attention and good luck with the quiz and exercises that follow.